are watching a master at work. Shut up. Since we started in October, the game plan has been the same thing every single day. And we have been trading the same exact game plan every single day for the last 23 days. You know, we're from here all the way here, it's been the same exact game plan. It's kind of been trading in a range. Now, we spoke about the 50 and the 200, and we said that if the market is trading above the 50, it's in a short-term uptrend to the 200. If the market is trading under the 50, under the 50, it is in a short-term downtrend. Under the 200, it is in a long-term downtrend. So right now, we're still in a long-term downtrend. But right here, you know, as if as we hold this 37.67 level, we could potentially be in a short-term uptrend towards you know this 4,000 level. But you know, as of right now, you know, we keep projecting the top of the range, which is 38.10. We keep holding the bottom of the range at which is 3,500. Now. Remember when I told you that usually we are in these ranges, uh, something happens during these ranges. There's always like a catalyst or a news event that, you know, solidifies uh, the breakdown or the breakup. So, you know, right here, you know, you'll see there's most of, if you go back to August 26 or you go back to uh, September 12th, you know, some of these days come out with, like a, a huge catalyst to kind of drop it down. This particular candle right here is happening on a week where there are so many earnings coming out. So you, you're you going into a day where there's a lot of earnings all at once coming out, uh, which could really break us out of this particular range or drop us back down below. And, you know, the event is unknown, which makes it incredibly hard to trade because I don't know what Apple's going to say. I don't know what Amazon is going to say. I can predict what they're going to say, but I don't know. You know, uh, If it's going to be good, you know, and we use 38.10 as a support, we could see some really big moves to the upside. But, you know, we could see a move to 3,900 and then all the way to 4,000. But as of right now, same game plan happens. You know, if you remember during this game plan, I mean, we grew the account from five to 18,000, pretty much two, 2.5 X the account. So, as long as we stay in this range, we got to keep our sizing, you know, fairly smaller. As soon as we break out of this range, we can size up. You know, now that the account has been, this is day seven on the account, it's pretty fairly in a, uh, it's fairly larger, I would say. You know, 18,000 gives you a lot of room to kind of trade with. Uh, heavy hitters, they report, uh, they always report after hours. Uh, the morning uh, reporters are weird. They're not, they're not that heavy hitters, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, they report after hours. Uh, so the options that I'm really watching this morning is going to be like the 3750. You know, I swung it. It's currently close to break even at this point. Uh, the uh, 3850 call as well looks pretty good. It is at $1.95. Uh, 3800 does not look too bad as well. So same game plan, you know, I'm in all honesty, it's 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 like same shit, different day. We are literally trading same shit, different day. That's why if you really look at it, I haven't really changed a single thing since we've been in this range. No. You know, if we reject 3810, you know, we're gonna bring push down to the downside. Looking at futures right now, futures are uh futures are down 12 points. Even our even our puts is like down with this because of you know theta kicking in and you know the move is not as expected. So you know we're our contracts break even, you know, going break even, going minus 20%. But uh pretty much off the open today, I'm going to be watching uh this particular level right here, this 3778. You know, if we do see a hold on this 3778, I'm gonna obviously be looking at the tape. Uh what we could do the first if scenario. We could take a call towards the gap fill of 37.97. It can take literally any call off the option chain, you know, 38.30, 38.20, 30, 30, uh, 38.50, you know, whatever, you know, you feel like 38.50 would probably be good. 38.20 would probably be even better. Uh, we can take a call to the gap fill. Uh, 
again, if it rejects here again, we can take puts to the downside. You know, those puts we took last night uh, at uh, 3.30 yesterday at a dollar, and we sold them at 2.2. They went from a dollar all the way to five. So uh, this level is a really good short level. But again, this level right here from 37.51 all the way to 37.78 is incredibly choppy, very hard to trade. Uh, so we have cushion. We have like $14,000 of cushion. But just because we have cushion doesn't mean, you know, we could be reckless because, you know, we could lose $14,000 in, 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 in one trade. And that's not really what I want to look for. You know, we have cushion. Because we have cushion, I want to keep, keep on building the cushion. So we had a pretty good day yesterday. You know, most of you guys had very large game, game days. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the accounts that we're trading, you know, 5,000, like 30% of the account, which is a lot. You know, we started with 5,000 on Monday. Uh, so today I want to take it a little bit slower. Reason being is psychologically, usually people who trade and, and, and they make, you know, large gains. One day, usually the next day, a lot of these traders give back the entire game. And I don't want that. I don't want to teach that. I don't want to preach that because that's what you come here to avoid. So that means, you know, we have to take it slower. We'll take it slower. It's totally fine. You know, you, you, you can work on your sizing however you want. But the, the best part about it is we built the account to 18,000. You know, when it gets out of this range, when it really breaks out of this range, I'm going to increase risk like no other. Like I will, I will uh, increase the risk. You can also use uh, on SPY uh, 374.22 as a level of support. You know, we already have that level on our charts. If you can see 374.229 and then 378.87, uh, which we do not have on our charts. But uh, let's go back to the charts on SPY. Uh, 374.22 we have, and that's been a level that we trade for a while. Uh, 378.87, 378.87. Uh, this could be a really good level. 378.87. This could be a very good kind of, this was a good level. So it rips above it uh, to watch out for uh, today. So. Or in this, these levels right here, these levels suck at 30, 37, 77. But ideally, you know, you want to see a retest of, of this 37, 374.2. Uh, at least it's 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 a larger range. You know, it's 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 something to work with as, as a trader. You know, you do have a pretty large range. You know, it could be really worse. Like when we were trading in this 40.72 to 4170, this 100 point range, this was fucking brutal. You know, this was like mentally draining on a daily basis because one day it'd go up, one day it'd go down, one day it would go up, one day it would go down, you know, and then it would take you out so many times thinking it was going to break. And then when it actually broke, it made a freaking move from literally uh, 4,100 all the way to uh, uh, 3,700. So it gave like a 400 point move, which becomes worth it. It's the problem is during these days, people are blowing shit up, like blowing it up, blowing their port left and right during these days. So when this happens, they don't have enough buying power. And then when this happens, they don't hold the trade. You know what I'm saying? After you wait for like, we've been waiting for 20 days. If, if this type of move happens and it, and it pushes, I am going to hold. I'm going to put... 15,000, you know, that counts at 18 and hold. You have to hold this part. You know, I'm not going to be looking to scalp it. And you got to go in and hold because this is this is exactly what we trade for as, as, as traders. You know, this is the move we want. This is the move. But I took this trade. I actually was asleep during the time. And when it broke out, I was asleep. I woke up my alarm at 3 o'clock. And even at 3 p.m., I entered the trade so late and I still caught a thousand percent at the end of the day. And then the puts woke up at a thousand percent and it just continued. Like these are the days where as traders, you do not want to miss. If you've been sitting here and you've been taking it slow, you've been taking it slow. When this breaks, this is your chance not to take it slow. If, if it when when this range truly breaks and we're using 3810 as a support, as a trader, you have to take advantage. You have to take advantage. 
whether it's increasing your sizing, whether it's holding your trade, you can buy time. If you know for a fact you can't hold ODPE, you can buy time. You saw yesterday when we bought time, that the time contracts held more than the ODT contract. But in the end, regardless, the ODT gave you better return. But it's the same shit again. The one was 100%, one was 120, you know? But the one that was 100% held very nicely the entire time through the job. Once we break, you must take advantage. If you're sitting, if, if we break and you make 20 bucks, 100 bucks, if we break and you make anything less than 1,000, you're, you're doing a very bad job. Like when we break, this is the day where you make your big gains. As of, as of right now, keep your position sizing small. You know, we are just here to build. You know, we're building ourselves, we're building our portfolio, we're building our, 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 uh, our uh, portfolio. And when we break, that's where the real building will be. You know, as of right now, we've been taking $2,000 days, $1,000 days. Our loss was $200. Uh, you know, it's been consistent, you know, with the same $2,000 every day. That's how we're going to build the account. But how we truly like excel the account is after it breaks out of the range, boom, there's your, there's your kind of chance to turn your 10K account to 20 or, you know, 20K account to 40, you know, you, cause, cause, cause the move is so large, even if you risk $5,000, but if it goes 400%, there's your 20K, you know, you don't risk the entire uh, portfolio you you just risk slightly above and you hold the entire time as opposed to trim 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 or you can risk let's say 20k and you know when it gets to 100 percent trim half and then you know start trimming as it's pushing up but uh until then you know we're still stuck in this range until we use it as a support all right game plan part very easier just because there's something to, to look at, but it's the same shit every day. For the last 23 days, I've been waking up and, and, and saying the same exact thing. Until we break out, you know, we're going to have a nice kind of a more balanced game plan, I would say. And there goes Futures filling the gap for us. Uh, looks like we're going to be taking calls off the open. Looks like we might be taking 38.50. There goes the market. There goes the puts. Right at where we close. Uh, we can kind of get a head start on the calls and, and enter right off the open just to scalp it. All right. The books you need to read are Market Wizard Interviews with Top Traders, The Man Who Solved the Market, How Jim Simmons Launched the Quant Revolution, uh, The Mental Game of Trading, The Psychology of Risk. I can send you the pictures of the book here as well as we're done trading this morning. 378.87 watching that level of the open. There's a lot of buying there's a lot of orders right there. Monthly what is this? There's four million, four point four about four point five million shares of that level. And it could be bought or it could be sold. I gotta figure that out. Right. 20 seconds. 810. We're gonna open at 3800. No gap fill, no nothing. If we hold 3800, we could take quick calls. I'm going to take 3,800 calls, 3,800, 3,850 calls is 2.9, 3,820 here at 10 bucks. I think I'm going to take 3,820 here at 10 bucks. It's quick, going to be in and out, not looking for anything crazy. Filled at 10.9, maybe 11.4 now, 11.6. 11.7, 11.8, 11.9, trimming here. One, two, three, two contracts left here. Not looking for anything crazy. Stop loss right here, break even. Build one more order. And if it hits 11, I'm out. 12.5 now. 16% is fucking fantastic. And I'm about to exit here. If it breaks though, I'm gonna keep it and roll, roll up into 38. Uh, all right, I'm all up. Quick 500 bucks, not bad. Not bad at all. 3750 is $3. I'm going to go into 3750 here. I'm going to average down these contracts here soon. If we do break, I'm going to take it here at $3. Mm -hmm. All right, stop is going to be 3810. All right, here's the rejection level. If it breaks here, I'm out and I'm flipping immediately into calls. Can buy two more. Mm -hmm. 
What a film. All right, my average is three bucks. Microsoft is down. Apple is down. Amazon is down. Who's, who's breaking the level? Only NVIDIA? NVIDIA doesn't move the market like this. Tesla? Oh, there goes Amazon. Amazon is trying. Tesla's pushing. Apple is pushing. Moment of truth here. All right, I'm going to just scale in slowly. I'm going to take five minutes to start. Apple is going crazy. This contract is going outside their break finally. All right, let's take half out at eight dollars. Order partially done. And then hold the remaining. Order film. This contract is fucking ripping. I want to trim a few more. Actually, I'm not going to trim. I'm going to hold. I'm going to trim a few here. Order film. Two. Order film. I have two runners left. Order I'm all up. So we just want to look for another re entry. Ideally, by at 3830, we can take 30. 3860. All right, we're going to scale into this contract. We're going to start with five. Actually, we're going to wait a little bit. As long as 3830 holds, I'm scaling into this contract. <coughs> Another order of uh, four bucks, see if it fills. It goes under the, the 21 email. I gotta get the fuck out. Like that holes under it. What is that? I have another here at 3.5. It's holding the 21 even still valid. I had a trim limit here at 5.8. Now five. I know this is not the start of a geometry though, because if it is, I really want to scale more, but uh, I'm just going to hold it since, you know, it's fairly relative. Sizing is pretty relative towards the portfolio. I'm just risking profit, you know, at the end of the day. So give us a rippy. Give us a rippy. Should we play Pop Smoke so she can rip for us? I think we play Pop Smoke so it can rip for us. I'm only holding this because look, five minutes looks beautiful. Both like, let's go. Come on, give us another. Reality has like his third roll up right now, tenth roll up already. Come on, give me my ten thousand dollar day or eight thousand or some shit like that. I wish we didn't take this and put in the morning, but I didn't think it was gonna break before earnings. It broke. Yeah. You know, as soon as we kind of broke right here, uh, this thirty-eight fifty-two. Uh, we saw a lot of selling pressure, volume kind of going down. So you could see some put action right now kind of come in. But unfortunately, what we're going to do is we're going to sit here and wait for a potential entry on calls. Uh, that's what we're really looking at. So, yeah, as of right now, I'm just waiting. I'm just having lunch. But uh, I have perfect entries would be 38.40, 38.38, and 38.30. Uh, it's pretty far from here. So we're just going to wait and let the premium do its thing. I'll be right back. All right, I am watching 38.50 call. All right, guys, I'm about to enter this 38.50 call. We currently have four bucks, 3.8. What is it? 3.8 first entry. Fucking hell, bro. Look at this shit. It's terrific. 50% right here. I don't know the order. I'm going to add 10 contracts at three. Four. 3.5, I just showed a few here at 4.2. I'll uh 4.4. I still have my limit of three, but I just don't want to miss this quick quick scalp type of shit. So are you using VWAP on SPY or ES to gauge where it is on uh SPX? Uh SPY. Okay. I still have a limit of three though. $8 is going to fill. It's going to go minus 1,400. I'm totally fine with it. I don't know why I FOMO on that entry. All I have to do is wait five fucking minutes. Four is my entry. A big ass red green candle. The trend should break here soon. It's been uh, downtrending this entire time, which is what we expected. But should have a break of a trend here soon. 
in the trend, as you see. Trend is down. It just broke the trend line. It needs to push above here, 38.41, actually 38.42. This was the previous high, 38.38. That's where we currently broke the trend. See, sometimes I can't signal it so fast, like this, for example. I'm not going to signal it to them where I'm up 30%. I'm just going to take my profit and I'm going to trim here half of 5.4. I'm going to trim two more here. One, two, I'm going to keep three with a stop at five bucks. Um, uh, good trade. Very good trade. There we go. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. All the cans you. Got to trim one more here and mm -hmm. keep it too. Motherfucker oh, was just 6.5. <laughs> By the time I hit sell, it went to 5.6. Come on, bro. Hey, Hassan, bro. What's up, brother? Dude, I missed I missed the reason for your entry on this trade. I was having lunch. What was the reason for the entry? Just bounced on uh, 38 to 35 and then the break of the trend right here. What time was that? Right that you saw that? Trend was down. Trend was down. Broke the trend. I entered right here because I thought the trend would break. And then the trend broke here and I continued. And I just scaled out right here on the around 1230. Yeah, 1222. Well, let me see here, 1222. So if it broke below that lower low, would you have cut the trade? Yes. The the five classes that we've done shows you how much I simplify trading. I don't care about all the other bullshit like MACD, RSI. I don't care. I don't care. It's all lagging indicators. Uh, candlestick is lagging, but I can read the tape so I can understand the, the, the candlestick price action. And I'm just playing the price action. I'm not using tape right now. In all honesty, I'm just using the price action on the candle, which I can clearly see is downtrending. I mean, look at it on a minute. This 30 seconds is bullshit, but look at it on a minute chart. If we remove this trend, remove this trend line. We can see we sold at 38.42. That's when yep. we sold. And we anticipated that it's going to come down because the volume was coming down. Yep. Uh, volume came down. And then if you look at SPY, now we go back to the other chart right here, SPY uh, on the five minute, uh, we can clearly see volume is the number one thing you have to focus on. You can clearly see, you know, as, as it's coming down, volume is coming down. But as soon as it kind of held the price action, volume did increase on the five minute. So this is what you need. I need to go and close the floor. But, you know, this is what exactly what I need to, to, to 10 minutes, all it takes the candlestick to make 20, 40 percent. You know, I don't need much. But the volume here slightly increased above the average, which indicates good, you know, that, it, that, 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 that the trend we just looked at on the one minute right here, this trend. Okay, one second. I gotta exit the full position. One. All right. I'm all up. This trend right here that's going to break here on the one minute is more clear. You know, clear trend break. And then I'm just literally taking the trend break towards the PT level. 3852 uh, was our level on the tape. That's the reason why I started trimming out before that. And the two runners, I put a stop loss at five. My entry is 4.4. Like I just got stopped up. You know, it's. Simple volume kind of coming in, break of the trend. I know I have a big level of resistance right here. That's where I'm going to sell most of them at. That's where I sold. You hear me? I'm selling 5.5, 5.6, 5.7. And that's where I sold. And now that the trend rejected, it's probably going to come down and test it. If it breaks above, I will gladly take it again. Mm, I see. Um, I'm, 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 I'm trying to scalp the premium. And, you know, and, uh, I made an extra thousand bucks. You don't need to sit there and hold for an hour. You know, there was an opportunity. I was up 2,000. How much was I up? I was up uh, 2,700. Now I'm up 3,700. 3, nice, nice. And now the account's at 22,000. I'll take it for any day, bro. And I'm playing small sizes. I'm not playing large sizes. Like it, you saw the first time I tried, I entered at the, at the uh, when the trend started firming, I entered one contract at 3.8. They went to six. I didn't have time to enter all 10, but I exited and found another re-entry. There's awesome. always a re-entry. That's what you have to understand. If you have trouble dealing with FOMO, you have trouble dealing with missing plays, 
there is always a re-entry. The contract has a range, just like the stock market has a range. You know, we're ranging between 3,500 and, and 3,800. The contract also has a range. The 3,850 has a range now from 3.3 to 5.5. Once it breaks up 5.5, you see a move. I mean, once it breaks up from six, you do see a move. It goes the contract from six to nine. But it's ranging also the same way the market is ranging. You have to be paying attention to multiple things at once. You're paying attention to the tape, which is telling you how the market's going to move. You're paying attention to the chart, which is showing you how the market is moving. Then you're paying attention to the premium. You want to look at the premium. Is the volume increasing? When we entered, IV was down. When we entered at, at 3.8, IV was down. As soon as it started to push back up, demand comes in, pushes IV to the upside, pushes the time value on the contract. I make money 40%, 30% fast. Mm -hmm. It's a science. It's a science and a system combined. You know, in order to, to understand the system, in order to implement the system, you must understand all parts. That's why I'm taking my sweet ass time showing you the classes. Because if I go quickly, 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 you on your brain won't understand. I'm right now trying to implement the trends, understanding the trends. It's simple. It doesn't get any more simpler than this. Higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, higher, low. But your, your mind should be able to apply it in real time. When I ask you, how much are you up? How much are you up? I want to see, are you holding through the uptrend or are you seeing red candles and you know, you're getting spooked by implied volatility decreasing on the option? I want to see, that's why I'm seeing. So when you're telling me I'm up a thousand, I'm up 500, I'm up a thousand. Okay, these guys are holding to the trend. These guys are understanding the topic. Then when I hear, oh, I'm only up 200, I'm only up 300, I'm only up hundred. Okay, these guys are not understanding the trend. They're being shaked out by the trend. Which, it, which in, 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 in a way doesn't help because those same guys that, that pull up 300, pull up 200 during a huge green day are the same guys that when it's red, minus 3,000. You can't. Me right now, okay, I, yesterday I'm up 5K. Today I'm up 4K. If tomorrow I lose 2,000, it doesn't fucking matter. I'm still up seven. You know, I was up nine, now I'm up seven. But for the person who makes 200, then 100, and then lose 1,000, he's fucked, he's down now 800 bucks. Me, I can lose now, I can take three losing plays, each one I lose 1,000, it doesn't really affect. But you, on the other hand, you gotta now crawl out of your hole. Mm -hmm. So try your best, the winning plays, hold them with me, the winning plays. It's okay if you see a little bit red, that's the whole point of it. You, you, you're gonna have to see red whether you like it or not. If trading was all green, bro, every single motherfucker you would talk to would be, be green every day. But it's not. It's a player versus player game. You know, mm -hmm. when we buy at four and we sell at five, sometimes when we sell at five, it never goes above five. It stays like when we sold, for example, 38, uh, 38 uh, 60, we sold them at 5.8. It didn't go a dollar, a cent above 5.8. Yep. The That's person right. that bought them at 5.8 lost. We bought them at $3. We won. There's always going to be someone that wins and someone that loses. The person you sold it to lost because you were more prepared than he was. It's the same shit right here. You know, there's always going to be someone that buys the absolute top and it goes to zero. And there's always going to be someone that buys the absolute bottom and makes money. And there's always mm -hmm. going to be in the middle. Bro, it's easy for you to follow. You have zero emotion. You're up 30,000, down 30,000. You, you, you removed your feelings a long time ago. A lot of traders, you have to understand, imagine you just entered the market. When I first entered the market, bro, for fuck's sake, minus 100, I'm selling. Emotion. Now, yeah, minus 1,000, I understand. The trend is with me. The, everything is with me. I'm fine. You know, this, this, this mentorship, actually, I'm going to do a class about mindset and psychology because it plays a large role. And in all honesty, in the past month, I have a, a mindset mentor who's been like mentoring me on mindset to keep my mindset healthy and fresh and, and, and everything. And it's made a difference. It's really made a difference. I see a difference in, in quality of life and quality of trades and, and mental uh, stability as well. So I'm going to kind of teach you some tricks that he did teach me uh, so we can implement it in your trading style. Damn, let's see if we didn't take the stupid trade in the morning. How much would we be up? A3, A39 plus 1, P98 plus 485. That would be up six grand, even more probably. When do you typically do one-on-one -on -one stays in times? In month three, I do them. As I've learned how you trade and your behaviors. Oh my goodness, it's fucking ripping. 
Me out. Come on, fill the order. Fill my 4.5 order. Order though. 22,000. Many, 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 many. 5.8. I'll take one. I'm going to take one. 5.8. You know, risking the entire thing. Worst case scenario, we're up 3,000 regardless. Hmm. At 5.8. All right, guys, I'm gonna call it a day here. You are watching a master at work. Shut up.